Yo, what's up? It's your boy Six, and welcome back to the final tutorial of 2020. Today, I have another no setup card trick that you can do with any deck of cards. And I'm gonna be honest, as I was performing the effects for myself, I actually fooled myself for a second and had to double back to try to figure it out. It's that clever of an effect. It's really simple, but it's just one of those things that flew over my head. So make sure you watch this entire video because it's worth performing. Before we get into our final explanation of the year, I just wanna take a second to thank you all from the bottom of my heart because to be honest, uh, 2020 has been a crazy year for us all. Uh, it really, it's really been hard to deal with and I know you're probably hearing it over and over again from other YouTubers, uh, maybe your favorite TV shows, the news, whatever the case is. Uh, but it's my sincerest hope that you and your family are doing well during these hard times and hopefully uh, this channel provides a little space for you to, to find a way out, right? To find a little bit of peace or normalcy in your life to bring you some joy. And it's, you know what? It's been a fun journey so far. I uh, just broke about 850 subscribers. I think we're up to like 851. Uh, so we're constantly growing uh, pretty rapidly too, which is really, really exciting. So thank you all. Uh, it truly means a lot. Uh, thank you to Xavier Spade, the person who, who pushed me to do this. Uh, if it wasn't for him, uh, I wouldn't be making these videos. So if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to thank him. And if you're not enjoying these videos, uh, it's all his fault. So make sure you go blame him. A big thank you to uh, my best friend Devante for always believing in me. Uh, for all these years and pushing me also to do the YouTube thing and supporting me and believing in me and shouting me out and uh, showing love to my videos uh, really means the world. Uh, so thank you to all the people that supported me throughout this year and of course all of you uh, once again. A lot of big things are in store for 2021. Um, I'm changing the formatting, I'm investing a lot more money into the channel, uh, lighting equipment, I want to do more cinematic things. And uh, not only that, I started a board game channel with my brother uh, just a few weeks ago. So if you're into board games or card games, anything like that, you can click the link down below and go Go check out our channel we are the board game brothers uh, so it's my second youtube channel that i'm now operating under so if you're into playing board games card games like i said be sure to go give that channel subscribe we're reviewing and talking about board games all the time so that's it the last video let's get into our last performance of the year and of course our last tutorial this is another wonderful effect from car Folks titled making the point so what you're gonna need for this is a deck of cards and two dice so if you have a, a game of yahtzee go grab that or any board game monopoly go grab two dice from that uh, you're gonna use it for this effect so it's a nice way to introduce other props other than just the cards into your routines like i said no setup self-working uh, and it's a fooler as always be sure to like comment and subscribe if you're new to the channel it really helps promote the channel so i hope you all enjoy it let's get into it All right, so like I said, for this effect, you're gonna need a deck of cards and two dice. If you have those, you're set to go. Maybe you're playing uh, board games. Like we said, Board Game Brothers, be sure to go check out my other channel. Uh, that if you're playing dice, you can grab the two dice and pull those out of the box, and then you can go ahead and grab deck cards and perform this effect. So I'm gonna begin by shuffling the deck of cards because uh, like I said, a no setup card trick. Aside from that, you know, when you play with cards and you play with dice, there's three things that usually take play. The first thing being chance, right? Some sort of luck. Uh, the second thing is probability, right? Statistics, the odds that may or may not be in your favor. And the third thing is choice, the choices you make. I'm going to use all three of those today. So I'll show you that the cards are genuinely mixed here. And I'm going to go ahead and take out a couple of cards to help me out. So I'm going to go with this one here and I'm going to go with this one here. So those are gonna be my two cards. And now at this point, I have the spectator roll up those dice, a little bit of luck on their side, and roll uh, two random numbers. In this case, they get a five and a six, which is gonna give us 11. So I'm gonna count off 11 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This really was completely up to them. Now at this point, I'd have them cover one of them. They're gonna make a choice, and this choice is completely up to them, and that's the last thing we'll use whatever number they choose. So let's just say they covered the six. I'm gonna cover that up like that because I don't have an extra hand around. So I'll use that. And in this case, the five. So like I said, we had uh, randomness choice, right? Uh, those are two factors. And the last one is probability. And probability, if we have a five here, the number on the other side in this case would be a two. So I'm gonna add two more. One, two. We're using all three of those factors. Uh, you didn't choose this die and we ended up using those numbers. If you would have used the other one, it would be completely different. Now, Let's use the one that you've been covering the whole time, the number that you chose, which is the number six. And again, if it was a five, it would have been different. If we rolled a two, it would have been different. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six cards because we want two packets because we have two cards here. And here's the thing. After all of that randomness, we ended up with two cards and it's 
what, what's the, the the king and the nine? Um, they don't match. It would have been good though if they if they were the same. But like I said, I took out two cards in the beginning, and well, could you believe it? Check this out. We got them. The perfect match. We got the two black kings over here, the two black nines, knowing exactly how you would roll, how many cards you would end up with. Who would think that's possible? It's probably not. Maybe it's improbable. Who knows? But that is another wonderful effect called making the point. All right, so I know you want to learn this effect. Like I said, grab a deck of cards, grab two dice, and you're ready to go. Uh, the deck is shuffled. There is no setup involved. And here's what happens. I'm going to go straight into the method. Uh, the first thing I do is when I spread the cards out just like this, I am now looking at the top cards of the pack. Uh, what I do is I have to know the seventh and eighth cards. I always remember lucky seven. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are the seventh and eighth cards, respectively. And those are the two cards that I'm going to be pulling out from this packet, okay? So um, I usually just keep them there. I'm going to look for the other black eight, which is over here. And that's going to be the card that I place over here on this side. And we'll look for the other black jack. And that's the card that I place over here on this side. Now, obviously, they don't get to see all this. I keep it all a secret, and that stays in the spread. I spread them face up. Look at the, I count by just looking uh, over to my left as I talk and then I just take a peek at those two cards, square them up, and now I know that I can simply go through and pull them out. It's that straightforward. You don't have to spread the cards on the table. You can really just keep them uh, face down the entire time, do some shuffles and say, I'm gonna pull out two cards. And then as you start to go through to pull out two cards, you go all the way to the top, count three, six, seven, eight, take a look at those two cards, and then you can go back Grab the spread, uh, close up the spread, and then say, "Oh, here's the, you know, I got two cards that I like. Go through, take those cards out. Never having the spread to show the faces. If you think somehow uh, that doesn't add to the effect, I like to just do a face up. I like to display the cards nicely beforehand as I talk. Nobody's looking, nobody's counting, no one's gonna think that I have anything to do with those two cards. Um, but if you want to still, if, for whatever reason, you can just pick up the cards, go through the top, count your cards off, go back, and then take out the two matching cards for the seventh and eighth." So here we go. Uh, now that we're here, you now have those two cards at the seventh and eighth posi position. You have the mate to the seventh card here and the mate to the eighth card here. The rest is all mathematical, but it's pretty straightforward. It's basically following the procedure. You do the procedure, you do the effect. Uh, all you have to know is the seventh and eighth card, pull out the mates, and that's it. The rest of the trick works itself completely every single time as long as you follow exactly what I did. Yo, what's up? If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get all the latest videos every single week. Now let's go back to the tutorial. So the first thing you do is you have two people roll a die. We ended up with a five and six again. I'll roll two different numbers just to show you. Uh, a six and a four. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to count ten cards. I'm going to add those two numbers together and count ten cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the spectator can choose to cover either one. Say so whichever one you cover, we're going to use later to separate the packet. So they can cover the six or the four. Let's just say, for instance, they cover the six. I don't know what this, we'll do it this way. We'll cover the four. So now that they cover the four, I have the six here. And I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the die to the opposite side and see, using probability, probability, what number we land on. And in this case, we land on one. Excellent. So now that we have a one there, I'm going to add one more card to the packet, just like that. So. Think about what happened. You rolled a die, we added those numbers up, random number of cards. Uh, you decided to cover one die and we got a random number. If you would have covered the other die, a different random number would have came to be. So I'll put this to the side. Now you've been covering this one for the whole time and let's see which one you covered. Ah, a four. See, if I count off four, one, two, three, four, we really had all these chances here. Well, in this case, we ended up with a black eight over here and a black jack over here, completely random. And even through all that, it managed to work because look at this. I got the other black gate, the matching black gate, and the other matching black jack, knowing exactly where you would stop. Then that's really the effect. That's it. It's that simple, that easy. Uh, all right, let's talk about something very important now. I'm going to spread these cards out. And let's talk about what happens and what you should do if, for some reason, an additional card is there. And what I mean by that is this. If I go here, look to the top. I'm going to spread this top portion out. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Well, you notice the eighth card is the four of hearts, but my other four is up here at the top, right? 
That's important because if I take that card out, it's gonna mess up the mathematics of this effect because I have to make sure that this maintains to being the seventh and eighth card. So I can't just go in and take out that four. However, if I take out that four, right? So let's say I go, I take out that four. I'm gonna place it there. And then the other one was the, uh, the black two. So I go through, I take out the black two place it over here, I can now fake to say, you know what, I'm gonna take out one more. Actually, you know what, I don't need that one. That one doesn't matter. And all I have to do is just stick it somewhere back on the top few cards. So you can you could just say, uh, I'll take out one more card. So you know what, that, maybe that's a little too much. I won't use that. And that's one subtlety or subtle way in which you can remove a card to add it back to the top because you removed that extra four that was up there. So you're just replacing it with an indifferent card after you've taken those two cards out. So I say, look, I'll take out one, I'll take out two, one more, uh, you know what, I won't use that. The same is true if for some reason, let's just say that these two cards, I'm gonna remove these, ended up here, right? Let's just say those two ended up at the top portion as well. So I ended up with, uh, so if I go three, six, seven, and eight, um, actually, let me get rid of one more because I want it to be the two and the four. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are my two key cards, right? That I'm gonna be pulling out the matches to, but I know that black two and that four are there. How do I get around that? Well, because if uh, this is why part of it's me spreading it at the, at the front of the table, um, I can say, I can just pick it up and give it a cut and say, you know what? Let me give the cards a cut or just give them a cut without bringing any attention to it going into the effect. And then I can look to see if it happens again. Um, but just so you, so you have an out, I mean, you can really just cut the cards and shuffle or just say, you know what, give it one more good shuffle to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. That's another out in order to make sure that they're, they're mixed up and hopefully that doesn't happen again. But again, the same procedure holds true. I'm gonna go through, I see that, that two and that four. So I'm gonna take out the other two and the other four. So I'm gonna take out two cards here. I'm gonna place those there and I'm gonna take out uh, two more cards. Uh, actually, you know what? I won't use those. Actually, that's not that's not important. Um, I'll just use two. Make it simple. And that's it. That's just how I do it. So it's a way to get those cards uh, back into the packet and keep two, four, six, seven, eight. Making sure those two cards stay in the seventh and eighth position if it happens there. Of course, you don't have to do that method. There's many other ways you can do this. Uh, you can simply just do a double undercut, right? So let's just say um, I didn't have to add those two cards back in. So now I took out those two cards. I know that I've changed the position. I gotta add two cards on top. So you could you could really, uh, you gotta play a game. Now I can do a double undercut, moving two cards from the face. It looks like I cut the cards because I see these cards change, but I just added two cards to the top, right? So remember the double undercut as we talked about before. I'm gonna get a break under the uh, packet back here. And this is my favorite version of double undercut because it makes sense to me to cut the cards and you see them change over and over again, but I'm just bringing them to the back. Uh, so I just like it when it's face up because you see the cards change, right? I see a joker, I cut, I see an eight, I cut, I see a jack. You think the pack has been cut three times or really the order has not been changed. And in fact, those two cards are now added to the top to give you uh, the two and the four at the seventh and eighth position. And it also added to the effect by making it look like you cut the cards three times, right? So they, they can't think that you have a setup somewhere. Uh, that's just another layer uh, adding to this effect. But there you have it, a wonderful effect uh, called Making the Point from Carl Falls. I hope you enjoyed it, really, really simple. And uh, that's it, Happy New Year everybody and we'll see you in 2021. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit up. Hop in my car in a giddy up. Giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit up. Hop in my car.